buy-in price. The buy-in price for the naturalist role is 25 gold bars. At the moment, it is unknown whether you also need to collect a role prior to, you know, getting the naturalist role. If you do need to collect a role prior, I will let you know in the pinned comment down below. Same with if you don't need the collector role prior. <laughs> but uh, once you've unlocked the naturalist role for the 25 gold bars you end up uh, coughing up, you unlock Harriet Davenport to do sampling and, uh, you know, killing poachers that are, you know, locking up animals. You'll also unlock legendary animals as well, but that unlocks at rank 5. But you will also unlock the trapper with the absolute alpha male himself, Gus McMillan. Here are all the locations for Gus and Harriet. leveling up the role. Now when it comes to leveling up the naturalist role, most people arguably agree with one thing about this role. It is the most painful way of leveling up a role, probably since the collector role when it first released. Now I agree with that statement as there is not a many good ways of really leveling up this thing in a fast amount of time. Now there are at least three or four methods that are well known. Now the main one being obviously sampling and selling them to Harriet. There's another one as well where you can study the animals which is basically a reskin of the companion from story mode that you can use with Arthur and John, you know, looking around, seeing what the wildlife is up to. And it's basically a reskin of that. Now studying and that, if you want you can do that, you get like 50 XP for the role and also 50 XP in general for your normal leveling and all that. It's okay, it's not the best way, but I would probably recommend doing the sampling and the poacher missions. Those are your main ways you're going to be doing it. Now, what are poacher missions? The poacher missions are basically the same as the bootlegger missions from the Moonshiner roll, where essentially, instead of taking out the revenue agents or poisoning someone's moonshine still, you're basically killing some poachers and you're going to free the animal that's in, that's been poached, essentially. You know, that's inside the, uh, the cage that you have to go and rescue. And it's fairly simple, it's just like a point A to point B mission. It's, it takes relatively less amount of time than, you know, like a bootlegger mission was. Now, what I would recommend doing in this mission, after you have done the, uh, the poach mission and you've gotten the animal and it's all free, I would use your new seductive rounds for the, for the varmint rifle and go and get a sample from it. What are seductive rounds, bro? And why do I need a varmint rifle for them? The varmint rifle in this update has a brand new ammo type called seductive rounds. Now, when you use these, this uh, ammunition, you can basically st stun the animals and they fall asleep. It's like a trank die, essentially. And essentially, after that, you can go and s collect a sample from the animals. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't work on all the animals. For example, squirrels, toads, uh, you know, bats and birds and all that. They don't work with that ammo type, as they are too small and, it, and that round is too high of a caliber for them. If they get shot by it once, it works just like if you shot them with a normal varmint rifle round. Essentially, the same result. However, if you use it on big animals, as you see in the gameplay right now, I'm shooting some gators right now, as you can see, Basically, it takes a couple hits for big animals like that to be shot. But essentially, after you're done, you can go and collect the, the sample from the animal, and then you can sell it off to Harriet to get not only her annoying voice saying, "Oh, we've stopped, we've stopped, uh, you know, animal cruelty and all that in the world." Not only she'll go on about that, but also you get some XP from the roll, and that's what I absolutely recommend doing if you want to start getting your XP in the beginning for this roll poached missions. As I mentioned before earlier on in the guide, these missions are basically the same as a bootlegger mission from the Moonshiner business, and they're fairly easy to do, and basically all you gotta really do is, is just go from one place to another place, and it's very simple. It's very, very simple. 
if I spent a whole segment just talking about them, it, we'd be here forever. But basically, the short end of the stick is, if you're in the menu for the legendary animal sightings, you can also press square to take on the poachers that have, you know, caged up an animal. And these missions are fairly easy, all you gotta do is just kill the guys that are in the area and then boom, release the animal. It's as simple as that. It doesn't take that much time, all I would really recommend is, it just depends on what you want to do with the animal afterwards. If you want to kill the animal, that's fine. If you want to save the animal by, you know, just leaving it be, go do that as well. Bob's your uncle, job done. But you can also sedate the animal if you want to with those new that new ammunition type that you got for your varmint rifle. I would recommend doing that very early on into the, uh, into the role. Upon after that, after you've done all that, you've maxed out the roll and you're playing these missions, I would probably just leave it be, and I would just, you know, maybe kill the animal for its skin or pelt or something, you know, go ahead, do whatever you want, you know, and yeah, it's as simple as that. So, let's get into legendary animals. Legendary animals. Now, in Red Dead Online with the Naturalist role, there have been a prefer of brand new legendary animals that you can either hunt or sedate. Now, when it comes to what you want to do with the animal upon completion of finding the animal and, you know, essentially getting it as your new target, you can choose either to sedate the animal or to kill it. Now, if you are playing co-op, I would recommend sedating the animal so everyone doesn't get screwed over. However, if you're playing solo, as you can see in the gameplay, the gameplay right now I'm hunting the legendary cross fox in honor of a friend of mine. Eh, don't tell her that I killed another fox like the last legendary fox that I killed. But uh, yes, in this mission, you know, you can either choose whether to kill the animal or to sedate it. Like I said, playing co-op you want to sedate that thing because everyone gets an equal share. Now, if you are playing solo, it's free real estate. You can choose whatever you want to do with it, if you want to kill it, or if you want to sedate it. Now, personally, I think it's best to kill it when you're playing solo, because what you can do upon that is two things. On the completion of killing the legendary animal. You can either choose to A, go and give it, to our good friend Gus, who we'll get into in a minute, or B, arguably one of the best choices you can also do with this, donate that pelt and the equip and the stuff you got from that legendary animal, donate that stuff to Crips for your trader business. As yes, you can actually do this. And I was very surprised when I heard about this. Thank you to one of my viewers, uh, Ben or uh, Devere Levy, for letting me know about this. So yes. As we mentioned, you can either choose to A, donate to Crips, or B, donate to Gus. If you want to get, you know, a bit more bang for your buck, donate it to Gus, who we will get into right now. Yes, Crips is a good choice as well, but, you know, I kind of like my clothing options as well. So let's go see what Gus has got for us. Gus's shop. Now, with the Trapper in uh, Red Dead Online being our boy Gus McMillan, um, essentially, you can buy a prefler of things. For example, if you decide to kill the legendary animals, as we mentioned in the segment before about legendary animals, you can actually get some nice clothing off of them. And there are many more clothing you can get from these ones I've shown you there with the legendary animals. You can also get clothing from regular animals as well. You can also get trinkets as well, which are similar to the talismans from story mode. And you can also get some ammunition for your weapons. Varmint rifle, elephant gun, and the bow and arrow. And you can also get a nice new skin as well for the bow and arrow improved. So, yeah, that is basically the Gus segment of this video. Should you buy the naturalist role? Now, the final point in this video after watching the guide, seeing how to do it, do you think you want to waste your gold on this role? Now, for me personally, I personally have fun doing the legendary animals and I have fun getting the clothing. Um, I personally would say if you want the clothing for the legendary animals and some of the animals as well as you saw in the Gus segment, yes, spend the gold if you want the clothing. 
The only problem is you need to be level 5 in the naturalist role in order to start up legendary animal missions. And the problem is the spawns at the moment for the legendary animals at the moment at the time I am making this guide are currently broken. And unfortunately, we don't know how long it'll be until they are fixed. So, if you want to get the roll, just make sure you use caution and hindsight that the at the moment the spawns aren't the best. Don't worry, they probably will be fixed in a few weeks or in a future patch, but that might be a while from now. But yes, uh, I would say go ahead and spend the gold bars that you have earned on the matchless roll. Mainly for the clothing that you can get from Gus, and also because some of the missions you can do for the legendary animals and the poached animals uh, are kind of fun in my opinion. The only downside is that sampling is the only real good way of getting XP. There's not really that much of a good way of getting XP from this if I'm being honest. So uh, yeah guys, that was my naturalist roll guide. I want to thank you all for watching the video. Um, once again, uh, these kind of videos are a different style to how I do them, similar to the Philip Cagliari bounty video, that was more of a test for this sort of stuff, and you guys like that, so that's why I'm back with a Natural Roll Guide in this sort of style, and uh, yeah guys, thank you for watching the video, I will be back in another video or another stream, if you did enjoy this video, do feel free to leave a like didn't feel free to leave a dislike just want your honest opinion so I know how to improve as well feel free to leave a comment as well on how I could do improve or if you you know were helped by this guy if this guy helped you out let me know as well through that um, if you're new around here do also feel free to to the channel we're on the road to 900 and feel free to join the discord too the link is in the description so anyway guys it's been me Kane and yeah I'll see you all in whatever the hell I do next. <laughs> Bye guys.